all right what's going on guys and welcome back to the channel welcome back it's your boy terabyte reacts here in the house man we are here once again with another episode of the sopranos hopefully i can get this done this weekend so you guys can have these episodes for early access by the time you guys out there all you regular subscribers <laughs> okay by the time you guys get to see this all the episodes will already be on early access all of them for season two so hopefully you guys will consider joining the membership on the channel of course um we're here man season two episode 10 off the sopranos man i'm enjoying this season so far i would say the character that has had the most character growth in this season is carmella i said to you guys as much in the last review where i told you guys that i might be in love with this lady i don't know what is it about her um she is definitely taking over the spot of the psychiatrist because you haven't seen much of the psychiatrist i will talk about my love for my for these characters these ladies you know what i'm saying i will talk about it if you don't like it that's cool too <laughs> you know what i'm saying that that's cool too you know what i mean but I don't know. I'm just loving some Carmela. I think I remember for last for last season, somebody was like, Carmela is, is, is not really their type and stuff like that. But this season, though, I say she wasn't number one girl for me. But this season, though, she really stepped up as one of the strongest characters in the show. No doubt. Definitely the, the strongest female character in the show no doubt about it they gave her her time to shine you know in in the first season the strongest female character in, in the show was livia this second season carmella has been that that she she been that girl you know what i'm saying she been that girl and i have to say man she has really impressed me especially as a wife she has really impressed me um and we are in the midst of tragedy right now so glad that christopher pulled he didn't deserve to be shot by those two guys like he, he didn't deserve that christopher it was a character that was trying to find himself a lot on where he actually belongs and he finally found his purpose he finally found his purpose of what he actually wants to do making that decisions to go towards that you know what i'm saying by hook or the crook he was going to go in that direction by being a part of this Sopranos family, a part of the mob, whatever, and literally the same day he gets shot. Like, that's so eerie. Um, there was some religious aspects that they touched on in episode 9, of course. I didn't want to go too deep into that stuff. I did talk about it a little bit in the review. Um, so... You know, I didn't want to go too deep into it because I didn't want to turn it into a whole discussion. And as I said, people tend to get a little bit touchy about religion sometimes. So um, I tend to not bring it up too much or I'll just give my thoughts and just be over with it because it could be a conversation that goes on for days. OK, so just like any other things that are really touchy and not necessarily politically correct, a lot of times when I talk about it on the channel, I'm really, even though I want to speak my mind, I'm still trying to be careful to not say, say anything, not necessarily not to offend anybody, but because of the YouTube algorithm and stuff like that, you will get community strikes for certain things that you say. There's no freedom of speech on YouTube. Just want you guys to know that there's no freedom of speech on YouTube. You can't just say whatever you want to say and get away with it. They will strike your channel and then forbid you or take away your upload ability or even your live stream ability from your channel so th yeah those are the times we're living in but in any case guys let's jump into the episode episode 10 here and i will see you guys at the end for the review You have to be absolutely 110% sure this is who you saw. This is definitely the man I saw. Have you ever seen him before? No. And the other man? Unfortunately, I didn't get a good look at him. 
the light was reflecting off the windshield, but uh, he was heavy set. It was really dark. I didn't want them to see me. I heard gunshots, but I, I thought it was kids with firecrackers. And then when two men drove out in a car, I crouched down in the ragweed. Sure. So it began to dawn on me. What had happened? And like I told the responding officers, I didn't finish changing the tire. I walked to a phone call right away. Thank you, Mr. Arthur. So goddamn fed up with crime. I I'd hate myself if I didn't come forward and help you put these people behind bars. Thanks to people like you, we may just do that. May I ask who the dead man was? Just a poor kid got hooked up with the wrong crowd. Crack? Something like that. Oh, they found them. That's why I don't do that shit. Yeah. You can meet me. No problem. I went over to Brookstone and I got myself a scale. What do you want to talk about? Fucking Dick Barone. Well, as long as the two of you are happy. I'm in no mood. It's freaking garbage business. I found out that bow tie and wearing motherfucker is charging me twice as much as everybody else to tip my trucks at his place. So you pay the tonnage and you charge your townships a little extra for the pickup. That's all. You got the smallest amount of roots of anybody in the association. You know, you're like the old woman who's got a Virginia ham under her arm and, and she goes around crying because she's got no bread. <laughs> never mind. The point is, your brother Jack, he never concentrated on sanitation. So what do you want Dick to do? I want a rate. All right, I'll see what he says. Yeah. You see, since he owned part of the company, A purpose. I don't fucking work to move some picnic coolers. Coolers are like scissors. Everybody wants one. Nobody has a fucking idea how much they cost. You put a Nigerian out on the street, have him sell these for uh, a couple, three bucks a piece. He's not gonna say, fuck it. Give me one. Davey, how we doing with them books of airline tickets? Wanna raise a red flag with the travel agency? A sporting goods store charges airline tickets in bulk? You say it's a promotional device, you know, customer of the year, salesman of the month, that kind of thing. Don't worry about it. You put it on different lines of credit. Yeah, but all of a sudden I'm ordering all this weird shit. I mean, picnic coolers, Ramlosa water. When's one of these vendors gonna realize I'm never gonna pay them and call the cops? When your fucking credit runs out, Diamond Jim. Until then, get on a fucking horn and order. Unless you're ready to pay us the principal you owe us. Hey! Be right back. Did you let them in the house? Warren. Warren. How do you say it in fucking Polish? She doesn't know any better. <laughs> Agent Harris. Who's your friend? I'm Detective Harold Giardana. From the Essex County Task Force. Well, I'm pleased to meet you. But if you don't have a warrant, could you get the fuck out of my house? Because I'm kind of busy. I can see that. Oh, you're a comedian. I is that how you broke your nose? Tony, we could have fun. <laughs> we paid you the courtesy of a visit. I want you to come down to the station to talk. To talk? About Matthew Bevilacqua. Dad? Uh, AJ, take the backboard out of the cabana. I'll be down in a couple minutes. Look, lawyer up. Come in one-on-one. -on -one. It's your call. Just name the time at your convenience. On your way out, do you think you could roll the garbages down the hill? Tomorrow's pickup day. <laughs> Let's go, Harry. Those are those FBI guys that were here before. And what do they want? Nothing. Huh. Keep this between us, all right? You know your mother gets. But here's what you're going to do for me. I want to hear Tony's voice on tape, Sal, saying I killed Matthew Bevilacqua. No distortion, no smoke clearings, no fucking nose blowing. Okay, okay, I get it, but let me ask you something. If I did ride with Tony on something like that, don't you think it would only get me tighter with him, raise my coinage, make Tony forget all his suspicions? You're a cute prick, puss. I'll give you that. Get me Tony on tape talking about this murder. So who's the witness? No joke, Sal. You don't want to see my darker side. Gold. If they had enough to pinch you for, there'd be bars between us right as we speak. 
So why did they want me to go down there? Locked you into a story, any story. So later a trial, any contradiction will sink you. Are we gonna go? Did you say you'd go? Please. All right. Procrastinate. Let me get our ducks in a row. In the meantime, keep your cool and go the speed limit. Don't give them an end. What did I just say? <laughs> Don't give them an end. Are you all right, Tony? This is some bad shit here. What's up, Anthony? How did this happen? Midlife crisis? You can talk to me. <laughs> the mother's left. Hi. We just finished. Uh, I'm sorry I'm late. I was bidding a job in Rumson. <laughs> My brother, artist with wallpaper, the only one you trust with your Brunswick and Fields. Vic, Carmela Soprano, Victor Musto. Nice to meet you. You too. You have a beautiful house here. Oh, thank you. Uh, not that it couldn't use a little freshening up. <laughs> Vic does amazing border work, too. You know, actually, I was thinking of doing some wallpaper in the dining room. Do you have a card, Vic? Or? Uh, yeah, sure. I, I'm, uh... Bonded, state certified, but I'm still dangerous. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, bye, Carmela. Thanks. Well, let's get together soon and have lunch, okay? Uh, have you tried the new Vesuvio? No. Okay. Lunch. Promise. Yes. Nice meeting you. Oh, you too. And I'm going to call about the wallpaper. <laughs> nice lady. Don't even think about it. She's married to Tony Soprano. Well, marriage's good enough for me. Who husband is doesn't matter. I respect the ring. Mm, especially that ring. Probably came off a dead person's finger. Wow. See how people are when they when they top behind your back. Mm. You see that so much in this series, bruh. You might as well just kill yourself. <laughs> you might as well, bruh. He doesn't want to go to jail. What are you doing up there? I'm fixing a fucking light bulb, that's all. It glares out the one ball when I rack. Jesus, okay. You're the one that's always worried about somebody ruining the felt. Oh, it's you. Excuse me, aren't you? I'm gonna go downtown, lock you into a story. And if they do have something, why the fuck ain't they talking to you? Give them time, they will. Murder and eight of racketeering. 20 to life. And they are the Flying Galone brothers. <laughs> My fucking kids, I will fucking cut you. Just tell me. Take it easy, Tony. It's fixable. First off, it's not a rat. Thank God. Don't thank him yet. There's a night ball witness. What are you talking about? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Shit! Did you see anybody? Did you see another living fucking soul? Fuck no. Don't worry. No, me a bump on the road. Oh, you're beautiful. Who, do we know him? All my friend at the station knows is that he's a civilian. A flag saluting motherfucker. Maybe you should let him chop it for a while, huh? Get the suitcase in my truck. Yeah, tell us about it. Hey, fuck all you. Fucking bygones are never bygones. <laughs> <laughs> I got to move some cash around. I'm going to land it. I'm going with a fucking package. I'm not going to be like Mickey Masuko. That poor prick, he had five fucking minutes to run. He ended up in some rat-infested motel down in Elvis country. What is that? Anyway, there are no Jews or Italians. I don't get it. It's starting. <laughs> it's fucking starting. Get back in your office, David. I'm opening my mail, and it's a lawsuit. It's a fucking lead on the building. They're going to close me down. Davey, not fucking now, OK? They're going to know after this that it's fraud. I'm going to go to jail for this. Get, get the fuck back in your fucking hole. Now. I don't know why he expected anyone to care about Maybe. his lean. <laughs> You're doing a good job. 
<laughs> Don't worry about this witness, Steve. Hey, oh, yeah. Go through him. Exactly. Exactly. You don't even know what he said. I know, right? <laughs> what then? I understood. Otrovam, what's it mean? It means sit on this cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> Five minutes away from the camp for the rest of my fucking life, and I'm laughing. You got it, Skip. You got it. It's been Don't have the witness yet. Nothing. This is the FBI, Tom. Local cops, you bite them a Christmas tree, they'll give you to grandmother. But you know how tight these fat cocksuckers can keep it. I'll call them, get some sleep. You don't want to stop by the Bing, get something to eat or something? Just tell me, T. What do you want me to do? Just let me think. Come on. What the hell? you the same fucking question. It's my store. Congratulations. It's a fucking disaster. Hey, some of those airline tickets came in. You want me to split them with you and Richie? They're mine. It's my idea. It's where you sleep? Yeah, sometimes. It's easier than going home. I don't know what you mean. Remember when you transferred into 10th grade from um, Baden-Baden? Fucking army brat. Hey, you remember when those Guidos from Patterson caught you up at Garrett Mountain, they had you barricaded in your old man's car and they whipped that rock and hit that guy in the eye? Don't reminisce on me. <laughs> Yeah, multiple Why times. Let me do it. They ain't let you do nothing. You kept insisting. Well, I knew you had this business here, David. It's my nature. Frog and the scorpion, you know. Now, besides, if, if you were the one, I'd, I'd be the one crying the blues. Right? What's the end? The end? It's planned bankruptcy. Hey, you're not the first guy to get busted out. This is how a guy like me makes a living. This is my bread and butter. When this is over, you're free to go. You can go anywhere you want. Oh, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Got a safe? Yeah, why? In advance. It's a little over 400k in there. I want you to hold it for me. If this goes down, I'm out of this area code. So my wife's gonna come in here once a week for an allowance. You don't ask her any questions, and you never, ever refuse her. If she wants it all, you give it to her. She won't do that. I know it's smarter than that. And if you're gone longer than the money lasts? Don't worry, you won't have to go into your own kick. This witness can't remain nameless forever. I didn't hear that. Oh, I remember that game. On Dreamcast? 
I don't remember that game. I don't remember what it's called, but I remember that game. <laughs> Did you hear me? I hope you apologize to him. For what? Tony, you promised him you were going to be at his swim meet. Oh, shit, I forgot. How could you forget? Something I had to do. Tony, he almost came in second. You should have seen his face when you weren't there. Yeah, well, I saw his face the other day when he had to go to the mall when I wanted to take him to the movies. What are you, six years old? <laughs> I said I'd try to be there. What is with you, Tony? This whole week, you're like an alien life form among us. There's nothing wrong. Thank you for sharing. You know what? Leave me the fuck alone. I'm exhausted. I'll make it up to him then. Swim meet. So where were you? Did you go see Christopher at the hospital? Yeah, I went to see Christopher at the hospital. Wherever you were, it couldn't have been more important than letting your son know that you care about him. No, only you care. Fuck you. No, fuck you! <laughs> fuck you! What's wrong with you? <laughs> Sit your ass down. What are you trying to do? That's exactly how fights go. <laughs> Where women are trying to women are trying to come at you like what what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Are you seriously trying to physically overpower me right now? It's not gonna work. <laughs> Stop it. I thought you might be able to use this. You said that uh, Ramon backed over your old corner with the truck. I lied. I smell those sausages cooking and I wanted you to make me lunch. You. Guess I'm hungry for a home cooked meal. That wife was a uh, gourmet cook. Christine told me about her. I'm so sorry. Thank you. I think she does have blue eyes. Or Hazel. So, oh, listen, nice. we were talking about the powder is. room. Yeah. Do you have a minute to take a look at it now? I could kind of use some input. Oh, yeah, sure. Sorry that it's in here now. I think it kind of closes the room in. Yeah, I see what you mean. It's the vertical striping. Yeah. Somebody even talked me into... Uh, Papering the back of the door here. I must have been out of my mind. Ah, stop it with the sexual oh, tension already. Jesus the Christ, man. So I was all in painting? with Carmela. Now they doing this? Come on. Just, uh, grass cloth, maybe. Oh, Jesus. Come on. <laughs> No! Oh, God, Jesus, Mary and Joseph, I swear to God, I never did things like this in my no, life before. Fault. I couldn't help it. No, I said I'd never felt like this before. Maybe well, not in years. Yeah, maybe me, never. Me too. I said it'll never happen again. No, of course not. I apologize. Okay. We just we should probably get back to work. Yeah. I am not in agreement with this at all, bro. <laughs> oh, fuck. I turn my head one second and they slip one in on you. It's a Bhutan, this one. Fucked an awesome investigator last week. <laughs> Thank my nephew for the stuff. Your nephew? This shit comes from my end. No, wait a minute, I'm sorry. Take it back. The sneakers are from Tony. Cock. You know, no, June. It kills me to sit back and watch. Forget it. No, finish what you were going to say. Well, I forgot already. Then unforget. I can't not notice that he's fucking you. This Catino bus job is like a license to steal. And what's he trolling you with? Bugats. It's garbage things. He's already taking your township. Now he's fucking with mine? What am I supposed to do about it? I'm under indictment? Sorry, Junior. I don't want to rip open no wounds. But, uh, I'm in no shape for disharmony. You and I both know. He's got to go. That's my nephew you're talking about. How dare you in my own home? Come on, Junior. This fucking guy was supposed to be laid out in middle of the middle of a year ago. I know it. You know it. Let me tell you who's not a good kid. That niece of mine. 
I left my brother's house one night, and my wallet was light. I'm talking about a ten-year-old girl here, Richie. Word to the wise, that's all I'm saying. Hello? Carmela. Big Musto. Hi, how are you? I'm good, I'm fine. I, uh, I was just thinking about you and, uh, and what happened this morning. And I, I just wanted to say again that... Oh, please, please, it was just a, it was a crazy thing. But look, if it's a problem for me to come back, I've got another job in Wyckoff, and, and yours is far enough along that Ramon can finish up, so yeah, there's, there's no charge to you, except for material. Oh, no, 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 I wouldn't think of it. It's just that, you know, since Jill, there hasn't been uh, anyone to even talk to. You know? Thought you respected oh, no. the ring, homie. In fact... What? Well, I was thinking maybe tomorrow you could send Ramon to the other job. That way, you and I would have a chance to talk, and maybe you know, on your lunch break or something. That, that would be so great. And I could make a lunch for us. Uh, maybe a, a galantine du poulet, a mescaline salad, a nice bottle of Barolo. That, uh, look, that sounds incredible. Okay, then thanks. Thanks for calling. That's terrific. Um, See you tomorrow. Yeah, I will talk to you tomorrow then. Bye-bye. Who was that? There's nobody there. Wallpaper man. Oh, my God. What? Oh, my God. Please, God, no. What the hell is it? The victim has now further been identified as Matthew Bevilacqua, a soprano family associate. Fuck. You think that? Officials close to the investigation are keeping tight lipped as it may involve a high-ranking mafia member. Oh, my God. Where's that detective's number? On the fridge. Those lying cocksuckers. Where on the fridge? On the fridge! On the fridge! Where on the fucking fridge? Oh, I knew it! I knew it! But you had to be the big man! <laughs> they screwed up really bad this time. All right, look, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be all right. If you're gonna go back to Gamblers Anonymous, we'll figure out a payment plan. We'll get you back on your feet. Can't payment you plan. Hey, you think it's a big <laughs> job, but you're going back. Oh, is that right? Well, where the fuck were you when I dropped out in the first place? I was just twisting the fucking wind out there. What? Both of you, you and your fucking broom up her ass, sister. You didn't give a fuck. You just fucking looked the other way. No, it's our fault now. Don't you ever talk about Christine like that ever. Oh, fuck her. Fuck you. How much did you lose? How much? He's in a hole for about 75 grand or something like that. Everything. What do you mean, everything? Everything, everything. For Christ's sake, Vic, everything. The savings, the business, everything. <laughs> you disgust me. I have to go chapter 11, and then the liquidators will come in, and they'll pick through the boat. This is a date, man. You don't fucking have it. As soon as Eric goes off to college, and by the way, he got into Georgetown today. You probably didn't know about that. But as soon as that kid's out of the house, you're packing your bags and you're keeping the fuck away from my sister. <sighs> Baby, don't tell me you blew Eric's college fund. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Christ. He told you everything. Jesus. Fucking asshole. How could you do that? Jesus. Well, well I'm paying for that kid's education. Thank you. Thank you. You're a great man, Vic. <laughs> this man should punch you in your face. I know I would. I would punch you in your face, bruh. Straight up. How could you gamble the business away? It's in my sister's name, isn't it? I didn't gamble it away exactly. Well, what happened? I, I got involved with some bad people. And then I got in debt to them and, and fucking Tony Soprano. All right? Yeah. Tony fucking Soprano. It's a bust out. You get in debt to them and when you can't pay them, they become your partners and then they just they fucking eat through everything like fucking termites. What about the cops? Oh, they're animals, Vic. They started a fire in my chopster, and then 
These two guys came to see me one night. Like you got no idea what dead eyes made it to your face. These two fucking bathrobes and flip flops. Hello. It's over, Skip. What do you mean? You know that other party who said he saw something that we know didn't happen? Yeah. He realizes now he didn't see what we know didn't happen. T? Yeah. Sleep well, my friend. You're gonna be playing Shania Twain? Come on, man. This is too much for this. Hopefully he doesn't... What is he coming to do? Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> you look disappointed, Carmella. All right. Welcome back, guys, to the review. Season 2, Episode 10. Great episode. Um, Yeah, so they... Tony was under a lot of pressure there. Um, thinking that he was going to go to jail, that he was being fingered. Um, but as soon as old witness found out that you just fingered Tony Soprano, <laughs> my guy recanted that same. It was like, I'm not sure who I saw, man. He might've been thin too. You know what I'm saying he might've been, you know, some, you know, it was dark. <laughs> I said, I don't know who I saw. Okay. Yeah. And they thought it was. Um, Tony, as soon as he found that out, he recanted that statement with the quickness. <laughs> didn't even have to do nothing to the guy. He, they didn't know who the, the um, who the witness is. So that was resolved pretty quickly. Now, I want to take some time to talk about Carmella. Carmella, what are you doing, man? Literally last episode, you made a commitment to your husband. And your husband made a commitment to you. What are you doing, man? You know what I mean? I get it. He's not going to always be in the mood. He's not going to always be there. He still has a business he's running until wee hours of the morning. He was worried about something he didn't want to probably. He probably did not want to burden you with. You know what I'm saying? That's why he probably didn't, wasn't being honest about exactly what was going on. But you should be used to this by now. You should be used to who he is by now. And she probably thinks that he's still cheating. And that's that's the reason why he came home late that night. Because he didn't exactly tell him what was going on. And then it's the situation with the son and the swim meet. And all of that. But all in all. He's still Tony Soprano. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's still him, man. It's still him. And I think he really has turned over a new leaf with the, having the woman on the side and stuff like that. So, we have this situation with this Stoski or whatever his name is. Matoski, Stotoski, whatever his name is, okay? This guy has gambled away everything his family owns. The business, the college fund, everything. And now he's in a position where his brother-in-law got to be calling him out and be like, dude, you're worthless. You disgust me. You know what I'm saying? Turns out that the brother-in-law um, of this dude, right? Turns out he's the one that Carmela wants to smash. 
Now, am I in agreement with this? No. But I was actually surprised he didn't show up. I thought he would have showed up and probably asked her some questions about Tony. You know what I'm saying? And what exactly he does or something like that. I could confront her in some way. You know what I'm saying? And maybe still bust her down or whatever the situation is. You know what I mean? But the thing about it that I don't understand about Carmella, right? She's doing all of this stuff with the maid in the house. She's doing all of this with the maid in the house, making food. You know what I'm saying? Making food and all of this other stuff. Um, for this dude that's going to come over, you're going to sit around the table, eat with him and all this other stuff. It's like, why are you treating this guy? This is the first question that I would ask. I was like, why the hell are you treating? Bruh, first of all, when anybody comes to my house to buy nothing, I mean, to do anything, fix anything, the most they getting is water. <laughs> okay. The most they getting is water. Okay. Anything else, you better find your ass to the store and go buy it for yourself. I'm already paying you to do the job. I don't need to feed you as well. <laughs> okay. Period. Point blank. You got a car. Go have lunch somewhere. Come back. Whatever the situation is. Or if you bring your own lunch. But my girl is not going to be cooking you nothing. For sure. For sure. Now. If that's something that you guys want to do fine i don't have a problem with that i'm just telling you what i would do i'm not saying that this use should be universally accepted as how it should be if you feel like today is the day where you're going to cook for the people who are working on your home or whatever the situation by all means you do that you want to be kind i'm just saying i don't do that because this is america this is america and word to the wise my friend be careful of who you feed because if something happens i'm not saying that i'm not saying that my girl cooking is bad i'm saying this something can happen it is possible that you can make a mistake and maybe you know what i'm saying give this person diary or whatever and shit happens okay and these people could sue you and that's the reason why i don't do that i will give you bottled water cool bottled water if you will you know what i'm saying not necessarily room temperature but maybe it'll come from the refrigerator it might be cool water you know what i'm saying i mean although you i'm just saying like i just don't do that okay i don't do that you do your work and if you need to eat you can always leave and come back go eat somewhere come back but it ain't gonna you ain't gonna be eating my food you ain't gonna be my girl ain't gonna be cooking for you so all that stuff i know it's hospitality i remember when i used to do construction and we used to go to these places sometimes we'll go to people's houses and they would feed us and i never partake and my my boss my supervisor at the time would usually ask me why don't you eat i was like i don't eat from people like that because i don't know them you get what i'm saying I know that they're being hospitable, but I usually tell him, like, you you can take my share, you know what I'm saying, or I'll just give it to him, but I won't eat it. He doesn't mind eating from people, like I do. I don't eat from any old, like, if we're at, in, in a certain setting, I will eat, you know what I'm saying, if I know if it's, like, family or I'm at a party or something like that, I'll eat, but in a setting like that where I don't really know you, you know what I'm saying? um in, in in certain circumstances it's not like you can't compare it to like if you go out to eat you get what i'm saying it's not the same those people there's an accountability that's a, a burden of accountability that's there that they have to adhere to so you can it's okay to eat when you go out to restaurants and stuff like that because they have insurance for stuff like that when you go to somebody's house they don't have no insurance <laughs> for anything like that. For all you know, these people could be feeding you whatever. They might spit in your food. Not to say that they won't spit in your food at a restaurant either. But I, I, I don't know. I don't know. This is a rabbit hole. It's a never-ending rabbit hole. I'm just telling you guys that I don't do that. I don't do that. 
you get what i'm saying like i gotta know you to eat from you man like i gotta you know what i'm saying on that level on like a house to house level you know what i mean so if she shouldn't if she wants to cook for him of course i'm gonna ask questions of course i'm gonna be like hey why are you cooking for this nigga what the what the hell is going on here you know what i'm saying like she has the freedom to do these things because in some ways she's allowed to do these things right because tony's not really home now she do do these stuff really when her kids are home sometimes and i'm like don't you think meadow is gonna ask questions i can understand anthony jr not being you know you know up to the point where he would ask questions or question it but meadow definitely would you know what i'm saying so i guess i just don't like i just don't like it but thank god it's over i don't think he's gonna come by to do anything like that i didn't like the fact that she's out here kissing him just out of the blue you know what i'm saying because of you know last episode but it is what it is but we can take a deep breath knowing that tony is out of trouble for this um murder here and we'll move on so thank you guys so much for tuning in as always that went a little bit left field <laughs> but, I didn't, but i had to let it be known because i feel some sort of way about that whole thing you know i just feel some sort of way about it but it, it's okay just like how you know when it comes on to to tony i feel like he turned over a new leaf and not gonna have the side pieces anymore i mean there's no confirmation on that yet but i i do based on what happened in the last it was the first time we ever saw him and carmella got intimate and then this happens the next episode so it's, it, it was just kind of i was just kind of caught off guard by it all but in any case i'm gonna move on to episode 11 i'll see you guys next time for some more the sopranos peace <laughs>